Hey, Scott. Uh, welcome back to Riyadh, and it's great to have you for the first time in the FII conference. Uh, so we'd love to kick off this conversation with asking you, you know, I know this is year 21 for Tiger, uh, and you've been a truly global platform. What do you think have made you successful in being truly global? Hani, th thank you for having me here. Much appreciated. Uh, well, th the first is that w we were early to identify that internet companies had very unique characteristics that made for great fundamental investments. And, and they, had, they had three things that were, that were unique relative to what we had looked at before. They could grow at a high rate for a long time because you had penetration rates and still have going from sometimes below 1% of a market to, in the case of online music, something like uh, more than half the market is now online. So penetration growth, that could lead to uh, uh, revenue growth for a long time, high incremental profit margins, and uh, if you could find them early enough, you, you could invest at, uh, at low multiples of net profits. So the first was the internet. The second was the idea to look for private companies as a way to be able to buy bigger stakes in the best companies for a smaller amount of money. And then the third was to look globally. And so the first investments that we started uh, doing research on were based in China, both public and private in the internet, uh, back in 2002 and three, And then over the course of years, we looked at companies in Russia, Latin America, India, Southeast Asia, and the region. And so uh, those are some of the factors that have helped contribute. Oh, fantastic. Thank you, Scott. Uh, so a very relevant question for today. Uh, you've been investing for 20 years uh, through different cycles, including the aftermath of the, aftermath of the dot com, uh, the global financial crisis. Uh, how would you compare today's venture environment to the previous down markets? The internet is not broken. This year, I think uh, Google and Microsoft each are going to generate somewhere between 60 and 70 billion dollars of free cash flow. 60 or 70 billion. And Google went public, I think it was 15 or 16 ish years ago, for a 40 billion dollar market cap. So Google went public at less than one times net profit. It was a value investment, uh, one of the best available then. And so the internet's not broken. We're continuing to see high revenue growth, high incremental profit margins, and if you can invest in leaders. What, what has changed is there are a lot more eyes on the internet yeah. than, than there were 20 years ago. And uh, during periods like this, uh, it's great that something like uh, 700 billion of capital went into market leading uh, inter private internet companies over the last couple of years. Uh, cost of capital is up. Uh, growth is, uh, is absolutely continuing at high rates. Uh, and, and companies are definitely making sure that their expense bases uh, are where they need to be so that they won't have to raise capital uh, until they'd like to. Got it. Uh, and throughout those same years, we, you invested specifically heavily in specific themes, like especially e-commerce themes and uh, consu uh, consumer markets, or mar yeah, consumer marketplaces. Uh, this included ride hailing, uh, food delivery, and e-commerce fulfillment. Uh, I'm really curious, like how do you decide as a shop to close up or close up on a specific investment theme? When do you set the time you know, to move on from that theme? Penetration rates. The hallmark of most of our biggest winners has been when we identified a large market that the internet made better. Like the internet made it better, faster, cheaper, using computer science engineers and great leadership. And to try to find those markets when penetration was below 2%. And uh, where a market that over the next five or seven years, penetration would go to more than 20, two to 20. And, and then before you've gained market share, before the market has grown, Revenue's up 10x. And where, now then if the market grows and a company gains share, you can have revenue that grows 20x, 50x, 100 plus x. And the best way to get into a company at a cheap multiple of cash flow is that type of growth. 
when we're typically looking to close up shop and go try to find the next great opportunity is when penetration rates start to rise. Uh, once penetration hits 10% of a market, we, we've had some very uh, nice successes, but it's just more difficult. And so we're really looking for those low penetration opportunities uh, that, that in, in big markets. Uh, so I'm very curious, like the last 10 years, I mean, one can characterize them as the era of like fast money, skyrocket high valuation, quick deals. I mean, today's market is nothing like that. So many like market headwinds. Uh, from your exposure to your portfolio companies, how do you see the leading companies behaving in these markets? Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm really grateful, and I, I think these stats are right. We, we, we own 2 to 4% or, uh, of six of the seven most valuable private internet companies today. I, I think the seven most valuable private internet companies are ByteDance, Sheen, Stripe, Flipkart, Databricks, uh, Canva, which we're not a shareholder of, because uh, I screwed up, and, and it's, a, it's a wonderful team and company, and, and we had a chance to invest a few years ago, and, and, and we didn't. Uh, th th did I mention that we're not perfect? Uh, and we do make mistakes, uh, many varieties. Uh, and, and then check out. And what we're observing is continued high growth, and many of those companies are profitable. But there are several private internet companies today that generate more than a billion dollars of net profit to today, not, not projections. And so from the largest, most valuable private internet companies, nothing's changing in the current environment because they have a sustainable business that is profitable or fully funded. There are companies that are earlier in their journey and expenses are higher than revenue. And for those, this environment uh, absolutely is different. And one of the great parts about internet companies, and it was why we started investing in it a long time ago, is a lot of cost, I mean, unless you're like a, an Amazon or, or Flipkart or JD where you have high variable expenses, the hallmark of great internet companies is that most of the expenses are fixed. And during a period like this, you make sure that your expenses are right around or below revenue. And that has involved companies doing layoffs that, uh, that have more cost than they can bear. And so uh, it's a different environment, where, but a healthy one, where capital is respected and companies that don't have to raise or companies would like to extend the time horizon un until they uh, need to raise capital again. And uh, very similar to what we saw well, when we got started in 2000, on the private side in 2003 and 4 and 5, it was a great opportunity to identify great companies and be able to become a shareholder uh, at a great price. And the same thing was true in 2009 and 10 uh, after, the, uh, after the, the recession. So Scott, since we have you here, like we have to ask you about the region. I mean, over the last few years, we've seen you like committing to funds. We are investing in startups in different countries in the region. We'd love to hear your view on the markets in MENA and Saudi. It, it's a thriving ecosystem. And in particular, so the, the three categories that have been something like mid to high 90s percent of where we've ever invested are software companies, fintechs, and consumer internet. And in particular, what we're seeing in the region is really great innovation, great founders, and, and starting to be some big numbers, like revenue, gross profit, uh, and in one or two cases, net profit from companies that have uh, been able to innovate. The, the first uh, success we had was a company called Souk, which is in uh, e-commerce and e-commerce and logistics and fulfillment. Uh, it got bought by Amazon, which was, which was an awesome outcome for, for us and for the company. Uh, we're seeing a lot of innovation in yeah, software, uh, logistics businesses, B2B marketplaces that help companies procure. And, uh, as we all know, it's a great, thriving region. There's a lot of financial institutions, and uh, th there's a lot of uh, software and innovation being, uh, being built to help them, help them uh, know their customers better and, and, and make more money. So, so tons of innovation. And, and the ecosystem, what we've seen is once you have businesses that are sustainable, well, an ecosystem develops, and you have amazing seed funds and incubation platforms, and uh, investors that focus on early stage companies that, uh, that can sustainably identify great businesses, 
and, and have them reach a profit and ultimately, uh, and ultimately generate a return. Scott, thank you so much. Have a safe trip back to Miami. Oh, sorry, Palm Beach. So, great to have you. Awesome. Th thank you for having me. Really thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. Appreciate it. And thank you all for Go being here. Go to stage. Here.